So almost a year and a half ago, we shot our Avoid Moving to Dallas, Texas, unless you can handle these 12 facts. Now, obviously, if you want to check that one out, you can go back and review my original video. This one ended up being one of our most watched videos since we started this channel back in 2022. So I thought I would maybe revisit the topics discussed in the video and talk about how things have changed since we shot that last video or whether things are still the same as they were back then. Now, the first topic we discussed was the political climate in the DFW metro area. Not a whole lot has changed since we originally shot the video. Texas still is pretty red. However, it is less red than it once was. Several of the counties that make up the DFW Metro are moving more to the center in terms of their political views. Seems like in many of the areas, Republicans are winning by smaller and smaller margins than they once did. And as for big city metros, they still tend to lean more liberal, as you will see in the city of Dallas proper. So is DFW turning purple? I mean, you know, you combine a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. What are you going to get? You're going to get some purple. So who knows? It seems each year when a new political cycle hits, that is all the media is talking about, about how Texas is turning purple and is set to be the prize for many candidates. So if Texas does turn Democrat, then so does the country. But there are still plenty of conservatives alive and well in Texas that would have a thing or two to say about that particular topic. Now, the second topic that we did discuss originally is the jobs market. This is still true here in the Dallas metro area. Texas in DFW continues to have a very strong jobs market and is a reason so many people continue to make the move here to Texas and to Dallas specifically. It is something else that we have talked about in a few of our other recent videos. If you've checked any of those out, Texas outpaces many of the states in job creation and with the lower regulation burdens on companies is why they are attracting more and more companies to move here to the Dallas metro area. So thankfully, Dallas is continuing in this particular trend. And in terms of salaries in DFW, we have not had a lot of updated census data since that last video. According to payscale.com, the DFW average pay has increased 5% since the fourth quarter of 2022. However, it has dipped in the recent quarter down 0.2%. So just a little tiny bit, if something to take note of. Now for number three, we discuss the schools and how they may compare to other states that you may be coming from. This is often just a matter of opinion. Students strive in different environments, of course. And when we're looking at an article from U.S. News and World Report that stated back in August of 2023, Texas is ranked 17th in the U.S., but again, this is definitely subjective to me because my husband grew up in California, and that is ranked 4th, but he swears to this day that the schools and the education were not that good. That also actually goes for some friends of ours that moved out of the Dallas area a few years ago, and they moved over to California, and they did not have a very good experience, and ultimately... They ended up having to pull one of their kids out of the school. The just the environment, the education, when he was thriving here in Texas, it just was absolutely not the same where they had moved in California. And thankfully, our friends moved back. So there was that great bonus for us. Now, one aspect that may affect the schools now, at least financially, is the property tax cuts that lower the tax rates that were used for the school districts. Now, schools are going to have to figure out how to make up the shortfall in the tax dollars that they once received. So, obviously, depending on where you're going, um, we always recommend you look into the different factors and the different websites of what the school districts are and where it is that you might ultimately end up and if those particular areas are going to be a right fit for you. Now, the fourth topic we discussed was the weather. And since we shot this last video, we have had to replace our roof, and it seems to have had some of the hottest summers since we moved here back in 2011. But other than that, most of the seasons seem to be fairly normal. We have some occasional snow in the winter that melts off in like a day or so. Also, depending on the day or the season, you just don't know what you're going to get. This past February, we actually broke the record for heat here in Dallas, and the temperature reached up to 94 degrees. And then four days later, it dropped up about 40 or so degrees down into the low 50s, and we were all freezing once again. So we'll just never understand what's going on with the weather here in the Dallas metro area. Also, when we are looking at our tornado activity, according to the National Weather Service, Western North Texas only had two tornadoes in 2023, 
four were in 2022 and nine were in 2021. So the trend does seem to be slowing for the tornadoes. Hopefully they'll just stay away and not bother to touch down here. But hail is also still an issue, not only for us, but also for clients and friends. We have had friends that moved here less than two years ago. And to be honest, they were so upset that they already had to replace the roof after less than two years of moving here. They were just, you know, obviously some of the lucky ones who moved into the right area and the right storm hit and absolutely, you know, caused some significant damage and they did have to replace their pretty much practically new roof. So Texas is still Texas, hot in the summer, fireworks in the spring, you never know what you're going to get. All right, now for number five, we talked about our property taxes in the previous video and how property taxes here in Texas are higher compared to a lot of the other states in the U.S. Now, thankfully, the biggest development in this area is that our governor passed legislation to lower the property taxes by raising the homestead exemption, which, as we indicated earlier, is mainly lowering the amount of taxes that go to the school districts. Now, before what we used to get for your primary residence of a $40,000 tax deduction, it is now up to $100,000. So, you know, obviously, if you own your primary residence, that's a good thing for investors. Doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now, people do always want to know about their taxes and based on the areas that they move, what they're going to be. But of course, there are multiple factors that play into that based on the schools, the county and the city that you move into. You may only have to pay, let's say, 1.8% in one area and then upwards of 2.6% and more in some of the other areas. And if you think your budget can afford a nicer home in a nicer neighborhood, well, your property taxes could be significantly higher based on where it is that you're going to move from one city to the next. So something you definitely want to do your research on if you're going to want to make sure that you know what your property taxes are going to be when purchasing a home. Okay, so now for number six on the list, which was the size of DFW. We indicated that Dallas metro area is over about 9,000 square miles, roughly. This has nowhere to go but up here in the metro. Homes and cities continue to grow in every direction. So growing pains are still present. Roads and highways are still needing improvements in order to handle the influx of people moving here to the Dallas area. They have now also approved to extend the Dallas North Tollway, which of course means more growth. Currently, the Dallas North Tollway stops right at about the Frisco Prosper border. Dallas North Tollway goes straight up right through the center of Frisco, and they have now approved that to go all the way up through the Prosper and Salina area. Currently, it stops on the border, but it's going to be extending about 7.7 miles all the way up to the Grayson County line. And with all of the growth happening over past Anna and Melissa area, up the 75 freeway, up through Van Alstine and into the city of Sherman, we're also seeing more growth and expansion out east. You go past Rockwall, past Fate, past Roy City, and those are just some of the examples here in the Dallas metro area. So we're not just seeing growth up towards the north and to the east, but we're also seeing it west and towards the south as well. There's lots of new construction here. Lots of people and businesses are still planning on moving here to the Dallas area. So more growth is continuing to happen, which means that the size of the Dallas metro area is going to be continuing to grow as well. All right, number seven was our lack of public transportation. This really actually hasn't changed much. We do have the DART system in different areas that can take you down into Dallas and maybe even from Dallas to Fort Worth or, you know, from Dallas even to the to the airport if you need it. But public transportation really has not kept up with the amount of growth that's happening here. So just depending on where you live, if you really need to rely on public transportation, something you want to take into account and make sure that you are moving to the right area, because most likely you really do need to make sure that you have a car when you're moving here to the Dallas, Texas area. All right, number eight is the amount of construction, and that has only continued as new developments and homes are being built out here. And with new home construction is estimated to account for 20% of the closed sales this year, that means more trades and supplies are being shipped all around the DFW area. All right, number nine on our list is the lack of scenery. But I do personally still love all of our trees here. Springtime, you see lots of areas to go check out the wildflowers, to go check out the tulips. And, you know, especially when blue bonnet season hits, 
definitely some other areas that you can go check that out here. You can go hiking down by the lake, which honestly, you know, we say hiking, but the trails really are beautiful, especially when the wildflowers are out. If you want to go mountain biking, tons and tons of trails. So you know what? We don't have the really high mountains. You're not going to see those views out your back door, but there are a few rolling hills and go, go hiking, go take a day out by the lake and enjoy that type of scenery that we do have here in the Dallas metro area. On to number 10 on our list, which is the fact that Dallas really isn't that much of a 24 seven city. Now this is still kind of the same, but as communities and cities do continue to grow, there really are more and more things to do. There are lots of things that you can do downtown, some great music areas and restaurants that you can go see, but really that whole 24 seven, staying out all night, partying all the time, you really don't get that much of it here in the Dallas Metro area. We're also seeing a lot of growth, obviously, up towards the Frisco and the Plano area. Lots of things coming in, lots of events taking place, but 24 seven, you're really not gonna see a whole lot of that here in the Dallas, Texas area. We are a little bit more quieter than some of these big major cities, but as the cities grow, there really is a lot more to do and a lot of things going on. You just might not be doing it till all hours of the night. Now, number 11 on our list, which we did touch on just a little bit, is actually knowing the right place to live. Because if you don't know where it is that you wanna move here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you really could be in for a rude awakening. In fact, a couple years ago, I had a client who moved down south, down south of Dallas because that was the area that her husband worked in and they didn't wanna to be too far from work. Well, lo and behold, less than two years later, he got a really great job opportunity that he was starting to have to do quite a hefty commute for. And he, you know, thankfully the hours weren't, you know, were a little bit more conducive to fighting the rush hour traffic here in the Dallas Metro area. But ultimately, you know what, <laughs> technically where they did move because they love that small, that slower pace of living and they wanted to be closer to his original job just didn't really pan out. And we also have some other new friends that moved here not too long ago. And although they still do love the area that they moved in, he also just recently got a job change and he's going to be looking at a fairly longer commute as well. So shout out to those friends because I'm pretty sure that they're watching. But you know what? Granted, it really doesn't matter as long as you love where you live. And thankfully, these friends absolutely love their neighborhood. They love the location that they moved to. So the husband's not too upset about having to do that long of a commute these days. All right. Last on our list is number 12, which is kind of a little bit of a bonus that we want to throw out there. And that's the fact that when you move here to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you are truly moving into cowboy country. Now, they really have been a little bit disappointing with early exits in the playoffs this past season, but hey, the Texas Rangers did in fact win the World Series, so Dallas at least has one champion here in the metro area. So whatever it is that you're looking for when making that move here to the Dallas area, the good, the bad, things you want to avoid and things you want to be aware of, we just wanted to shout them out here one more time and give you a little bit more of an updated list. So any questions at all about what it's like moving here to Dallas or where it might be the perfect fit for you, please reach out, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, let us know what we can do to help you make that smooth move here to the Dallas, Texas area. And until next time, take care.